What's going on, everybody? It's Ricky with Video Homicide. Welcome to day 22 of the 31 Days of Horror here at Video Homicide. I got another remake to talk about. I'd recently talked about the blob and how much you know I preferred the the remake over the original. Well, this is another case uh, like that, and we're, we got 1990s Night of the Living Dead, directed by Tom Savini this time, uh, remaking from his friend, his old time compadre George Romero. This is a movie that is far superior than the original, although I do say the original is amazing. It's uh, also one of the most influential films of all time, horror film, film in general. Everybody knows the lines, I'm coming to get you, Barbara, and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, I think this movie is a vast improvement, and Tom Savini is uh, is here to to definitely amp up the violence, amp up the special effects, and just give us a more powerful and empowered woman character, Barbara. This time, she's not just like the sniveling wreck. I was recently listening to the 22 Shots of Moods and Horror podcast, their George Romero episode, where they talked about you know, how in the original Night of the Living Dead, Barbara was just kind of like a wreck the whole time, and she kind of acted like a person that just lost her brother, where in some movies, you know, like two scenes later, they go, uh, you know, oh, well, blah, 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 we're going to go to the store now, but even though they're like, mom just died, well, in this movie, um, Barbara is, she starts off kind of like, you know, I think she's in like a frilly dress and all that stuff. And, you know, of course it steals the whole plot from Night of the Living Dead, which I don't think I need to get into. I'm pretty sure most of us have seen that flick, but if you haven't, it's all about, uh, a brother and sister that go to pay their respects at this, uh, cemetery and, uh, they run into a zombie and the brother is killed. This time the brother is played by Bill Mosley, who of course is a Rob Zombie regular. We know him as Otis. We know him as, uh, um, who the fuck else do we know as him as, you know, there's a Rob Zo uh, excuse me, a Bill Mosley film. You guys might be able to help me out with it. It's about like this couple whose daughter is like abducted and killed. And then the couple goes and abducts the killer, but I'm not going to say anything more than that because there's a plot twist, but Bill Mosley is in it. If you know the movie, leave the name of it in the comments. Cause I've been fucking meaning to check that one out again. It was on probably IFC back in the day, but anyways, Bill Mosley is in this film. Uh, Tony Todd is the, uh, you know, the Ben character, uh, Dwayne Jones played him previously in the 68 version, but Tony Todd, of course, the candy man pre candy man, by the way, um, he, he does a fantastic job as the, um, you know, the protagonist of this film. And we got Tom towels. Who's another Rob zombie sort of uh, regular in his own right. Who's passed on since I believe he plays uh Cooper. Who's the guy in the basement. Who's like, you know, we all got to stay in the basement, blah, blah, blah. And of course, Tony Todd's like, no, we got to stay here, safer, blah, blah, blah. We need to fix up the place. And uh, I always found it funny that there's like this abundance of like lumber laying around and like nails and all kinds of shit. And, you know, they're fortifying the house. And in this movie, like the zombies, like they, you know, they're, they're post, um, they're post dawn or excuse me, day of the dead. I need to look it up to see who did the special effects in this movie, or I'm going to actually go fucking insane. Um, because they, I don't know if it was Savini. I feel like that would be a very hard job, you know, doing both the effects and directing. So we're going to go high. We're going to go over to the most uh, faithful place of all time. That's a Wikipedia production. The special effects team. Um, the ba 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 ba. What in the fuck is going on here? Okay, the special effects team initially kept the effects restrained as they felt the excessive gore would be disrespectful to the original film. To keep the effects realistic, they used as inspiration a real autopsy, forensic pathology ta textbooks, and no Nazi death camp footage. Savini said he wanted to keep the film artistic despite his reputation as the king of splatter. The zombie extras were recruited easily, and as the film's reputation grew or drew them away as far as Kentucky. What? Okay, so did fucking Savini do the effects or not? Um, who the hell knows? Either way, I'm not going to fucking spend my the rest of this video looking who did the effects, but I, I think they look good nonetheless. Um, I think one of the standout zombies, that fat zombie at the beginning, uh, I think that the zombie that is the, you know, the, I believe his name was Bill Hinsman. He was the original zombie in Night of the Living Dead, the one in the cemetery. I think the, the one they got for this one looks very fucking cool. Um, well done all, all the way around. But um, when I watched this movie for the first time, I remember thinking, uh, you know, it, like it, it was more it was more badass. You know what I mean? But I, I don't think I was nearly as scared 
as the original. I think the original, because it's in black and white and because it's, you know, a film from the 1960s, it has this certain feel to it, this certain like flavor where it, it, it feels like it could be real in a way, like the, the situation, at least not exactly, you know, it doesn't look like a found footage film or anything like that, but it just, it just feels like uh, a, a time capsule of the 1960s, but it doesn't feel so far away. Do you know what I'm saying? Whereas this movie kind of feels like, all right, da, 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 we got our guns. We got, you know, everyone's kind of like, I don't know. It just, I, I think it's really good, but I just feel like the other one is much more scary. And, uh, that, which is a good thing, you know, like, cause this movie it's, it's got, it could probably scare, a you know, a younger audience if, if you know what I'm talking about. But in terms of, if, if you threw on 1968's night of the living dead for like a five-year-old kid right now, and then you threw on this one, I bet. And if they watched them all the way through and paid attention, I bet you that they would say that the original is much more scary, even though it's less graphic, uh, just because of the atmosphere alone, the atmosphere, it will always make a film more scary. You know, I was list I was <laughs> I recently discovered Red Letter Media. I don't know if you guys have heard of them or uh know what know what they're about, but basically they do they do horror reviews and stuff like that. And uh, you know, they they do a lot of they did this episode about malignant and how that movie feels like uh you know I don't know how I can't describe it the way des- they described it, but like they said like it had a certain feel that was like trying to be scary in a way and i don't like when movies try to be scary i like when when like you know the atmosphere alone is scary like you don't need to amp it up with fucking jump scares and all that kind of stuff so uh shout out to red letter media i am i am watching them like probably daily at this point going back through their old old videos and stuff but i'm having a blast with that uh because there's not a lot of good you know um youtube creators out there for me right now uh other than the ones that i'm already subscribed to but you know people that are talking about a film for you know, long amounts of time. Like I'm talking between half an hour, 45 minutes. I like hearing stuff like that. Uh, especially if, if I, you know, can like the, the people talking about the movies, but yeah, man, I I hope everybody has seen both the original and the remake of nightmare, nightmare on Elm street, night of the living dead, because, uh, it goes to show you like how a remake should be for the 1990s. Because previously we, like I talked about the blob, the fly thing recently, uh, in the 1990s, we had Night of the Living Dead, which was like the remake of, you know, I think it was probably about the same time, like the same amount of time between Night, the original Night and this Night as the Blob and the remake. You know, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so it, it, it's an important movie. It's it's not talked about nearly enough, I would say, because it is like the remake of one of like the best, most notorious horror films of all time. So. Uh yeah man like when I talk when you're talking about remakes of films I- I'm never I'm never really drawn to that many of them although I will admit that I'm a fan of Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 03 and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre the beginning I prefer those over part 2, 3 and up I think that part 2 is great but I would rather watch 03 or the beginning uh, probably the beginning before 03, because I just think that movie's so good. I think Arlie Army is like a fucking ruthless bastard in that movie. But when you think of the 2000s remake, or excuse me, when you think of the 1990s remakes, I can't even really think of that many, uh, other than this one right now off the bat. But, uh, when it comes to the 2000s, like everything was remade, man. Everything from Nightmare on Elm Street, The Thing, uh, Friday the 13th, fucking Hellraiser, like everything, Child's Play for fuck's sakes. Uh, there's a new leprechaun fit. Like there's so many sequels and remakes of all these films and nothing can really compare to, to, uh, to night of the living dead, you know, because I feel like it's, it's, it's the type of remake that tells the same story, gets it across. And, uh, you know, it, it improves in some aspects on the original film, like making Barbara a more powerful woman in the film. And, uh, you know, there's, there's quite a few remakes that i don't mind but there's so many they're shit man like that prom night fuck i didn't even really like the original prom night when i watched the remake i was like holy fuck when's this gonna end um my bloody valentine's another example of one that i didn't like nightmare on elm street uh friday 13th remake recently we watched rewatched in the last year or two fucking hated the film <laughs> uh that child's play remake from a few years ago couldn't stand it a uh, halloween remake rob zombie both of them i love i like both of them I think they're really good. I know a lot of people talk shit about Rob Zombie and 
all that stuff. I think they're just saying that just because it's like the popular fucking thing to say. And that's, that's fine if, if that's your mindset. But I really think that those movies are fantastic. And uh, I'm trying to think of some other remakes. Uh, Hills Have Eyes remakes. Those were both fantastic in my opinion. I thought they were really good. Uh, vast improvement. The, especially the first one is a vast improvement on, on the original one in my opinion. Even though it's, you know we're talking Wes Craven stuff here. But I just, you know, it, it's it's more brutal, it's more graphic, but it carries the story as well. And it, it, it doesn't just, you know, when these fucking remakes, like, just depend on, like, the graphics and, like, special effects. That's what I mean when I say graphics. But, like, you know, all that kind of stuff. And they don't tell the story. Like, when you look at those movies like Hatchet, which aren't remakes, but they're kind of, like, basically playing on the whole 1980s thing. Uh, I can't fucking stand those movies, man. Like, they think because, all right, yeah, in the 80s we had some hokey acting and stuff like that. but now when you do it it's just so bad like it's so fucking bad i can't stand it uh H hatchet one two and three i think i talked about those on my recent live stream uh not in depth or anything but just gave my little bit of an opinion on them and i think that they're just awful <laughs> sorry man i can't get into them at all uh i believe the same director did that movie frozen where they're on top of like the ski lift that is a movie that i enjoy uh, even though it's not a remake and I'm totally fucking gone off topic here, but I appreciate everybody for watching. I'll leave a 666 in the comments. This has been day 22 of the 31 days of horror and uh, I appreciate everybody for watching. So adios.